might be just a little bit obsessed with moss. Uh, but if you like moss as much as I do, I think you're really gonna like this cute little starter cottage. It's nice and small and super easy to build, and it features lots of pretty little details that really bring it to life. It can be a little bit hit or miss whether you can actually find moss early on in the game, so if you still want to build it even without moss, I'll be showing off a few variations to try with the roof at the end of the tutorial, so definitely make sure to stick around and check those out too. Before we get started, here's a list of all the materials we'll be using to build this house, plus some helpful items to have if you're building this in survival. Now, the first thing we're going to do is decide where we want to build our house by marking out a rectangle that is 14 by 8 blocks in size. Then, to make the floor, go ahead and fill in the inside of the rectangle with spruce planks. Next, we'll construct the front wall by taking some stripped oak logs and building up a triangle shape following the dimensions on the screen. You'll be building right on top of the path we dug out in step 1, and you should have one path block left on either side when you're finished. Then replace the bottom row with a mix of cobble and mossy cobblestone. Finally, we'll detail the front with plain oak logs facing outward to show the rings. And begin the roof by placing upside down spruce stairs all along the top of the wall. Once that's done, add a spruce stair right side up on top of each of these until you get to the top where we'll then place two spruce slabs and then come right back down the other side placing spruce stairs again until you reach the other side of the roof. Then we'll head around to the back and build the same shape as before to create the back wall. Once again replacing the bottom layer with cobble and mossy cobblestone. And again, we're going to place spruce stairs upside down all along the top edges just like we did with the front of the house. And then come around to one side to place spruce stairs up and over top of these, making sure to place the two slabs on top and building back down the other side with spruce stairs. Now we'll come around to one of the sides and begin filling in the roof with dirt blocks in between each set of stairs, like so. If you already have lots of moss, you can replace the dirt with moss in this step if you want to. However, in the next step, we're going to be using bone meal to convert the whole thing into moss and cover it with grass and flowers all in the same step. So I actually think doing it this way is a little bit easier and potentially costs less bone meal if you only have a little bit of moss to start with. Once you have the roof placed, simply add in a single block of moss and bone meal it to make it spread onto the dirt. Then repeat this process until all of the dirt is converted to a beautiful grass and moss roof. The moss will probably spread out from the roof and around the house just a little bit, and this is totally fine, as I think it blends the house into the surrounding terrain quite nicely. After finishing up the roof, we'll head back around to continue working on the front of the house, first putting in the door so we can go inside, and placing some lanterns in here so we can see, and then from inside, we'll set up a window by placing two trap doors at the top center of the wall and then head back outside, remembering to place a door on the way. Then scaffold up and remove the two blocks in front of the trap doors and add some cute flower pots for detail. Then add a row of spruce trap doors, doubling up the two in the center, just to add a little extra visual interest and break up the wall in the front a little.
After that, we'll add a little window, along with some flowering azalea leaves out front, surrounded by spruce signs, to give ourselves a cute little box planter growing just outside the window. And then finally, we'll finish off the front with a little pathway by adding just a small handful of path blocks here and there, and then mixing in just a few blocks of mossy cobblestone. All right, now we'll head back around to the back of the house to make a chimney, starting by replacing the middle two oak log pillars with the same mix of cobble and mossy cobblestone blocks we used for the base of the house. Then we'll add four more blocks out in front of the wall, as well as a block on either side, and then add some stair blocks on top to give the structure a little extra shape. Then we'll head up to the top of the roof and replace the two moss blocks at the top here with some cobblestone, making one side slightly taller and adding a campfire on top of each block, surrounding both with spruce trap doors. Once that's done, we'll head back down to the back of the house and add a few more details, starting with a little wheat farm. If any moss grew back here, you might need to replace it with some dirt first so you can till the ground, and then dig out a single block for the water source, cover it with a slab, and add a composter on top, plus a barrel nearby for a little extra storage to keep your seeds and stuff in. I'm just gonna go with a cute little wheat field in the back here for now, but you can definitely make yours any size you want. Once your wheat field is growing nicely, place an item frame on a wall nearby to store the hoe in in case you need it later, and decorate the space with a few flower pots. And then we'll also add in a wheelbarrow made from a composter, a grindstone, and an open fence gate filling the composter most of the way to the top. Moving to the other side, we'll make a little stack of firewood by placing a few rows of oak logs and decorating with a few extinguished campfires to look like some smaller pieces of firewood. Then we'll make the space look just a little more lived in by digging some paths here and there around the area. Now the last thing we're gonna do for the outside of the build is take some birch leaves along with some flowering azalea leaves and place them somewhat sparingly on and around the roof, starting from the bottom and working our way up and over, focusing most of the leaves along the outside edges of the roof. I do want to note here that my birch leaves are yellow because I'm using a resource pack. So in my case, I feel like the birch leaves add a nice pop of color to the house but if you're not using a resource pack, another excellent choice for adding color would be to mix some flowers in with the azalea leaves instead. Also, don't feel like you have to follow the placement of the leaves exactly here. I think I've done it differently every time I've built this house, and it always ends up looking really nice because the overgrown grassy look gives you a lot of room to play around with the block placement. And then lastly, I'm just gonna go around the house and add some lilac bushes at the sides, along with a few more small flowers here and there. You can absolutely go crazy and add as many flowers as you like here. I'm not sure it's even possible to overdo it. Once we're satisfied with the leaves and the greenery, let's go ahead and head inside to build the interior. On the inside, 
The first thing we want to do is take some spruce stairs and place them upside down, up and across the ceiling along the back wall like so, to make kind of like a support for the roof and to also add some detail to break up the ceiling a bit. Add the stairs along the bottom edges as well, and then back up and over again in the front, matching the same design as the back. And then back along the other side as well. Then fill in the very top of the ceiling with spruce slabs connecting the front with the back. And then on the back wall, we'll add a little fireplace onto the chimney. On either side of the chimney, place a normal stair with an upside down stair on top, connecting across with two more upside down stairs. Then place two slabs on the very top and some lit campfires at the bottom, which you could use to cook with in survival. For decoration, a potted oak sapling along with a few candles will add some nice detail to the mantle. Then on either side of the fireplace, we're going to line the walls with barrels for some storage and add a cute little potted tree made from a dead bush with some azalea leaves on top. And then we'll repeat the same thing on the other side, only this time we'll use the flowering azalea leaves to add a little variety. And then add a single small painting, whichever one you like best, or an item frame in the corner here to tie the space together. And then at the front of the house, we're going to take a bed and turn it into a cozy but functional little reading nook by placing a trapdoor on either side, along with a couple shelves over on the wall which you can decorate with some flowers and sea pickles, maybe some candles, or any little detail blocks you like best. Then we'll complete this space with a few bookshelves, another flower pot, and one more painting. Off to the side, we'll add a space to store some armor along with all of our treasures from adventuring. And then bring the whole space together with a little moss carpet. Then on the opposite side of the room, we'll start off by changing out the floor to make a little space for a small kitchen by replacing the spruce with a tiled pattern of polished granite and diorite in a little 3x3 grid like so. Then we'll add in some useful blocks like a crafting table and a furnace which we'll decorate with a detector rail to look like a little cooktop. And then on the side, we'll make a little countertop using trap doors. And then for the other side, we're just going to temporarily break one of the moss blocks in our roof to add a stair facing outward like so. And then we'll go ahead and put that back. And then place the rest of your counter first before adding some water into the first stair to make a sink which will be useful for filling water bottles for potion making. Then to finish up the kitchen, we'll add a little cabinet to store some food, and a little freshly baked cake for the countertop, along with an item frame as a plate to hold your favorite Minecraft food. Then around the other side, we'll put a couple banners decorated to look like cute little dish towels, And as a final touch, take both types of azalea leaves and add just a small handful up and around the ceiling, maybe even replacing some of the spruce blocks here and there to add just a little more greenery. And finally, go ahead and take a step back to admire your cozy, mossy starter cottage. 
Like I mentioned at the start of the video, if you don't end up finding any moss right away, there are a bunch of cool ways you could build the roof instead, such as building the roof out of dirt and letting the grass grow over it. You can really go crazy with the flowers like I did with this design here, and it looks really good built into the side of a hill like this, which has the added benefit of giving you basically infinite space on the inside. And for a slight variation on this style, you could even set up in a spruce forest and decorate the roof with ferns and berries instead. If you start in a snowy biome, you can turn this design into a cozy winter cabin by filling in the roof with some snow and ice instead of moss. Or even try out a more classic townhouse style by using cobbled deep slate or even other stone-like blocks to fill in the roof. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I had a lot of fun building this cozy little starter house, and I hope you will too. Thanks for watching, and happy crafting!